In this video, I want to show you a type of optimization problem that is very difficult to uh, solve to optimality and at the same time it's extremely important for a type of company uh, because it affects its uh, operating costs uh, very significantly and therefore it's critical for its profitability and for competitive advantage. The problem is called vehicle routing problem and it is a simple variant of, uh, of this problem, for short VRP. Um, and this, uh, this problem, uh, this is a problem faced by a distributor that is operating, you know, some kind of warehouse or a depot from which it sends trucks uh, to its customers and delivers some goods. And then we are given uh, demand for every customer. So here the numbers actually mean the num point number, depot is point number one, and this is point number 10 to point number 23. And here in this table, you see demand for every point, except for the depot. Of course, the depot point number one doesn't have any demand, but every other point has some kind of demand, which uh, you can think about as uh, like weight of uh, the goods that need to be delivered to point number, client number two, client number three, and so on. And the, the problem is the truck has limited capacity, and we want to send the truck such that each point is visited by exactly one truck, and that truck satisfies the demand of this uh, client. But at the same time, we don't want to exceed the capacity of the truck, which is 90, right? So the total weight of all the demands that are shipped by one truck before it returns back to the depot, the total of those uh, loads cannot exceed 90, right? And since that some of the demands is 364, we will definitely need more than one truck. We will probably need at least five trucks, right? Uh, uh, 364 divided by 90 is 4 point something, so we will need 5 trucks, right? And this problem has only 30 customers, so a total number of points is 31. I created a model that can solve this problem, and I'm not going to explain it in great detail because it's a very complex model and this is not the point of the video to understand this model. The point is to understand what decision variables and how many uh, how many and what type of decision variables we have here. And the second thing is, what uh, what is the objective that we have here? What are we optimizing? So the decision variables are binary variables. And if you recall, binary variables are the ones that take zero or one value only. They are a type of integer variable, but right, but they only take two values. And they are kind of indicators. And in this case, they indicate if the track that visits node i goes next to node j. Right? So, for example, for, for uh, node 10 and node 23, there is going to be a variable x, 10, 23. i is 10, j is 23. And this binary variable, if it takes value 1, it means that when the truck visits node 10, it next goes to node 23. And, uh, and if this value were 0, then we would say it doesn't go to node 23, it goes somewhere else. Right? So there, is, there are these binary variables. There are also flow variables that tell us if the truck goes from node 10 to 23, how many units is it carrying right, of the load? Because we need to ensure capacity is not exceeded and we satisfy all the demands of, of the clients that the truck visits. Right? And the second thing I wanted to say is that, that the objective is minimizing the total distance. So you see those xij variables. When xij is 1, Right? It multiplies the distance, the corresponding distance from node i to node j, and this is summing all those distances, so that means at the end we have an objective that calculates total distance, and you might think that total distance is like a total cost, right? Um, a measure of cost, because the longer the distance, the more fuel we use, the more time it takes for the trucks and drivers, so the costs are increasing. So the model is also implemented here in Excel, and this is the table of variables, just for you to see how large the model is, right? This is the table of xij variables. There is 31 times 31, right, decision variables, binary decision variables here. And that another set of flow variables, fij, there is another 31 times 31 of those, right? So there is a total of close to 1,000 binary and close to one, another 1,000 of continuous variables, in total almost 2,000 variables. And I want you to see that if the moment I try to solve this using Excel solver, actually the solver will complain because there is too many variables for the solver. It only can solve problems with at most 200 decision variables. So 
I cannot use the built-in Excel solver, but uh, I can use a free open solver, which you can download from uh, the web a website called opensolver.org, and then the, you need to follow the instructions to install it. The nice thing is that if you install Open Solver, you, it, it already knows the model from Excel Solver, so you can basically start solving it. I set an option also for the Open Solver to limit the computation time to one minute or 60 seconds maximum, because I know this model will take too much time, and I don't want to uh, wait for, for the optimal solution. Right, uh, so I just set the time limit for 60 seconds, and you see already it's been uh, working for uh, 14, 15 seconds, and it is still computing, and it still hasn't found the optimal solution. And uh, and I'm going to now wait for the 60 seconds to pass, and then resume the video. So the solver is almost done. Oh, now it finished, and you see it stopped because of the time limit, 60 seconds. Has, has elapsed and and the solver the solver is not actually reporting an optimal solution for us it is reporting the best solution that it found has a total distance of 687 point something distance units but it's also saying the solutions i have not yet checked right the solver has not yet checked uh, could have possibly a value as good as 560 so the total distance might be as good as 560 but uh, there is no guarantees, right? So the actual optimal total distance is known to be somewhere between this value that is guaranteed by an existing solution and this value that is just a lower bound, the best possible uh, but not guaranteed. The, sum, the value that could possibly be achieved uh, if the search continued, right? And this is the gap, this is something sometimes called optimality gap, which basically is by what percentage can this value be further improved. So you see this is a, uh, about 23% of possible improvement if we continued solving. right? And why is this important? So a distributor may be solving this problem many times uh, every day right? for an even much larger number of uh, clients because it receives all the orders and has to um, uh, dispatch trucks um, um, at least once a day it has to solve a problem like this and at the same time the distributor uh, the distributor uh, cannot wait uh, for a long time right and uh, but uh, cares for the optimality of the solution because it is it is their uh, competitive advantage part of their competitive advantage to find the, the best possible solution. If it uh, can minimize the costs, it can offer better prices, uh, maybe it can improve its profitability, uh, it can write the, uh, run the competitive game with, uh, with the other distributors. So if I try to see the optimal solution, the solver will tell me, yeah, well, this is not the optimal solution because we stopped in the time limit, but the solver will report for me the solution that it found with the total distance 687, the best solution. And you see, right, the binary variables here are set. For example, we see here that uh, the track goes from the depot to node 10, to node 21, 23, 27, and 29, right? So there is actually five tracks sent. You can ignore the... Uh, the value one to one because it's the track going from depot to itself. So not this is really not uh, the track is not moving there. We could change this to zero uh, manually. This is an irrelevant variable. But when it goes from one to ten, we can actually trace that next it goes from ten to four. Right? This is right. And in this row, there's no other variable that is equal to 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 one. So we see uh, how these variables are set. We can also see that. The flow variables, which indicate how many units are in the track when it goes from node 1 to node 10, there is 78 units. And then when it goes from node 10 to node 4, there is 73 units. So we see how many how the units are shipped and, uh, and uh, how the, the, the travel of the track progresses. And I also actually created here a visualization of this solution. So you see how the track is moving and right we can actually find that this is the node number 10 and this is node number 4 and uh, the track goes from node depot to node number 10 and then next to node number 4 and then we can trace how it goes on right uh, 
to, to the, the following nodes. And so this visualization so shows you a solution. It looks like a, a, a decent solution, right? It looks like the, the distances are short. We're not going you know, from, from the node on one side of the map to the other side and back. So it looks like a decent solution. However, from what the solver reported, remember, this solution might actually be uh, uh, quite a significant margin, what was it, 22% away from uh, the optimal solution. And therefore, uh, we don't know, maybe there is an improvement possible, maybe quite a significant improvement, right? So to recap, um, so actually, let's, let's uh, understand why is this problem so difficult? Uh, it is difficult because it's not a, just a linear problem. It is a linear problem with integer, specifically binary variables. And it also is, uh, the number of binary variables is quite large. So had this problem been just a linear problem, right, without this binary restriction on those variables, it would solve within a few seconds, even on a, on a simple laptop. But because there is a binary restriction, because this problem falls into the category of the integer problems, it is much more time consuming, right? And uh, at the same time, I want you to see it's a very relevant problem for the distributor, right? The distributor that has all these clients, if they can reduce the cost by 22%, they might improve their overall costs by 5, 10%, and then that might mean a big difference to their profitability when they have to compete on prices for those clients, right? And, uh, and finally, I want to say that uh, maybe if we solve this for five, 10 minutes, we would get to a very good uh, solution, maybe optimal solution um, could be obtained uh, within a reasonably short period of time. But remember, the distributor might have much more than 30 clients. If there is 100 or 200 clients, the number of these binary variables that we see here on the left would grow tremendously, right? Uh, it's n square. For n clients, we have roughly n square variables. And, um, and the problem would become even much more difficult, right? And at the same time, remember, the distributor needs to solve this problem daily. Uh, so, so this becomes quite a challenge. And uh, if there is a distributor that can solve this extremely well, they might achieve a great competitive advantage through optimization and, uh, and basically win uh, in the competitive game uh, with their competitors.